The next chapter of the Borderlands series is now available and built on Unreal Engine 5 supports DLSS, FSR, XCSS, and frame generation. But the real question is, is your GPU up for playing it? And starting off with VRM usage, at the low quality setting, the game is pretty reasonable by modern game standards, only using about 7GB all the way up to 1440p, though that does cross the 8GB barrier at 4K. Jumping up to the ultra quality setting though does increase the requirements quite a bit, now needing more than 10GB to run at 900p, and you'll want a 16GB card for 4K. If you are looking for a frame generation that does increase things by about a gigabyte, though it doesn't really matter if you're doing two or four times frame generation if your card supports those. Though a much more simple way to increase your frames is to lower down the settings. There's not a very big performance jump going down to the very high setting, though you will get a nice 33% performance boost going down to high, and a massive 83% boost on the low quality setting, though that does disable all foliage and has massive reductions to shadows and reflections. And when we look at the 1080p results at the highest quality setting, you will need to make use of those lower quality settings if you have an older or entry level card. And even then, it's probably not a guarantee, since you'll probably want a 60fps experience to play this game. And at the highest quality settings, at 1080p, very few cards can do that. With the bar to entry being the RTX 5070 Ti and the RX 7900 XTX. The fastest card you can buy, the RTX 5090, does achieve above 100 FPS, so if you are looking to utilize your high refresh rate gaming monitor, you'll probably want to lower down the settings or enable upscaling, which we'll take a look at at the end of the video. For now, let's take a look at the pain that 1440p brings on. And if you have an RTX 5090 or an RTX 4090, you can still game at 60 FPS or above. But for everybody else, you'll need to fiddle with the settings or enable your favorite upscaling solution. We can also see here that the 16GB version of cards, namely the RX 9060 XT and RTX 5060 Ti 16GB, while both fail to provide playable frame rates, do deliver a substantial increase in performance above their 8GB counterparts. The 4K results are even more of a bloodbath, especially for the entry-level Team Green cards, with more than a dozen cards failing to hit double digits at 4K. That's not necessarily unexpected due to VRAM limitations, but even the RTX 5090 doesn't do very well here, only providing 45 FPS, so let's move on to upscaling. We do run these tests in a different area, so the results aren't one to one, but we can see the native RTX 5090 performance at 4K is 49 FPS, and enabling the DLSS quality setting is enough to get us above 60 FPS at 77, with performance bringing us up to 94. If you need more than that, you can enable frame generation, which enables you to hit up to 243 FPS with multi-frame generation. An RTX 5070 Ti at 1440p is in a very similar situation, able to get above 60 FPS with the DLSS quality, which just about matches what you can get with an RX 9070 XT, but if you are looking for the highest possible frames, the 5070 Ti does allow multi-frame generation. For the 8GB variant of the 5060 Ti though, 1080p is a bit too much, only achieving 60fps with DLSS performance, so for that card you'll probably want a combination of lower settings and upscaling. The same goes with the 9060 XT 8GB, especially in this particular scene, with the only configuration getting 60fps with ultra quality settings is with frame generation. 